Europe a continent at the forefront of a monumental shift, a journey from the age of fossil fuels to a greener, more sustainable future. As the world struggles with the escalating climate crisis, the European Union is leading the charge in transforming its energy sector. At the heart of this transformation lies the growing industry of biodiesel and biofuels. In the heart of Europe, a transforming vision is taking shape. The European Union is united in a singular ambitious goal to lead the world into a new era of sustainable energy. With the clock ticking on climate change, the EU has embarked on an audacious mission to drastically reduce its greenhouse gas emissions, aiming for a 55% reduction by 2030. Launched in December 2019, the European Green Deal is an ambitious package of measures aiming to make the EU's economy sustainable by turning climate and environmental challenges into opportunities. The Renewable Energy Directive, cornerstone of the transition to a sustainable future. It's not just a policy, but a declaration of intent, a commitment to a future where clean energy is not a luxury, but a right for all. The EU has also been updating its regulatory framework to support the green transition. This includes the Clean Energy for All Europeans package, which sets rules to facilitate the integration of renewable energy and improve energy efficiency. In the busy cities and calm towns across the EU, the impact of this green transition is undeniable. Public transportation systems are increasingly powered by biofuels, reducing urban air pollution and enhancing the quality of life. This is a revolution that touches every aspect of life, redefining the relationship between humanity and the environment. But among these changes, one sector stands out for its unique potential and promise, the world of biodiesel and biofuels. Economically, the biofuel industry faces its own problems. Government policies and subsidies play a significant role in shaping the biofuel market. However, these policies can sometimes lead to market distortions affecting both the energy and agricultural sectors. Balancing these economic factors while ensuring the biofuels industry growth and sustainability is a delicate task for policymakers. The public image of biofuels remains unclear and contradictory as well. In the midst of Europe's green revolution, biodiesel and biofuels emerge as pivotal characters. But what are these substances that hold such promise for our sustainable future? Biodiesel and biofuels are not just alternatives to fossil fuels. They represent a new chapter in our energy story. Derived from organic materials, these fuels are the alchemy of modern science and nature's bounty. Biodiesel is produced through a chemical process known as transesterification. This involves reacting vegetable oils or animal fats with an alcohol, typically methanol, in the presence of a catalyst such as hot sodium hydroxide. The result is a conversion of triglycerides into methyl esters, the chemical compounds we know as biodiesel. In biodiesel production, the focus is not just on creation, but also on refinement and quality control. The fuel must meet strict standards to ensure it burns cleanly and efficiently. This involves removing impurities and ensuring the chemical composition is optimal for use in engines. The goal is, is a biodiesel that is not only environmentally friendly, but also reliable and high-performing. The science of biodiesel and biofuels is also about compatibility and performance. Engineers are working to ensure that these biofuels can seamlessly integrate into existing engines and infrastructure. This involves understanding how biofuels burn, their energy content, and their impact on energy wear and tear. The aim is to create biofuels that can match or even surpass the performance of traditional fossil fuels, making the transition to green energy not just sustainable, but also advantages for consumers and industries alike. While biofuels are promoted as carbon neutral, their entire life cycle can contribute to carbon emissions. From cultivation to processing, each stage must be optimized to ensure that biofuels are a truly sustainable energy source. In the face of these challenges, the European Union is not standing still. The search into second and third generation of biofuels aims to address many of these concerns. By using non-food crops, agricultural waste and algae, scientists hope to meet against the food versus fuel issue and reduce the environmental impact of biofuel production. The journey towards sustainable biofuels is a complex one, 
but it's a path that European Union is committed to navigate with care, innovation and keen awareness of the broad implications. In order to dive deeper and get a broader view on the topic, we have conducted interviews with various experts and industry members. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Pedro Fadin. I am a professor at the Department of Chemical Engineering here in Cairo, Leuven. And I'm also president of Ipnoi Association. Biodiesel and biofuels, they are material technologies. They are already available, they are in parts of the world. Brazil, for example, is using ethanol already for many years and so on. So this, and, and, and also biodiesel is, is also a technology well established. There are companies in Europe and there are tests of this biodiesel for application in aviation and the different applications and so on. So the, 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 there is no problem with the technology here. The biggest problem is with the biomass. Yeah. Where we in Europe where can we find biomass in Europe to supply this? If you talk about biodiesel, you need oils. So from where are those oils coming? And then you are going to look from where are the oils coming and the competition with other sectors because oil is also important for food area. So what, how are we going to, to counterbalance this? So the development of the biodiesel and biofuels in Europe will depend very much of the availability of the biomass Another point is that what, what is the technology that is going to emerge for cars? If we have car technologies for the next 10 years, all cars are going to be electric, for example. So what is the role of all the fuels and are these fuels being used to generate electricity and so on? So we need to consider that. But my main point or the main critical point for biodiesel and biofuels in Europe is the availability of biomass and the competition for that biomass for different sectors. And there is also issue about logistics. You know, you thought, well, we have millions of tons of uh, agricultural residue, but you need to consider the logistic to transport all this, you know, from where this is going to be produced. So materials with low density, complex to process and so on. And also you need to consider that part of this needs to be on land after. So, that the complexity of biomass availability in an European reality should be considered very carefully. The issue, again, it's also very important uh, that how we will make it, you know, what is the feasibility to make it here? Maybe in a small community, right, where you have oils produced and so on is part of that, so you can have a place producing um, biodiesel that biodiesel is utilized and so on so here we can look on an European perspective on more than a local local solutions than like in a big corporation collecting all the biomass from one place you know put in a big factory and exporting everywhere so maybe from more local solutions so that would reduce emissions for example that would be more adequate to what you can integrate locally yeah? Because that is one objective of bioeconomy. Yeah? The objectives of bioeconomy is actually to uh, reinforce the local economies and the national economy. So that might be one opportunity. Yeah? And I also see that this biodiesel, as with any bio thing, it's not going to be a transition from fossil to bio 100%. Is going to be gradual. If you look at about technology, real energy for technology, you're also going to have a mix. It's solar, it's a, uh, it's a biofuel. So the, 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 there is a combination, right, of technologies. Mm -hmm. This combination of technologies may improve, uh, maybe take us to a next step towards sustainability uh, and, uh, and and better yeah, sustainable and renewable solutions for energy. As an educator, we have to include this in our education. And every, I mean, I teach, for example, bioprocesses and biochemical process engineering for my students. Of course, this is related to bio and related to to, to, to yeah, sustainability, related to, to circularity and so on. But in every other course, this is important. 
I also think that it's very important that course is related to the awareness of the customers as we as customers, you know, because we have a lot of decision power. Yeah. Another point that I find that is interesting to monitor this is somehow applications like in, in, in Denmark, they have a very interesting system, like you, your mobile phone, you can go to, a, to the supermarket and you put your mobile phone with this app on the barcode of the product and comes the formulation of your product with all descriptions of the uh, this is uh, hormone disturbing, this is, this is and then it is your choice if you buy that or not right so I would like to see this for, for, for several products this is a good way to people actively engage in decisions because it's not only about rhetoric you know the, we should be doing this we should be doing this and it's not about museums because there is also a lot of greenwashing and to say yeah i mean i'm doing this doing this that is much better much more sustainable and so on but uh, in fact it's not so it is about creating an awareness right on a technological point of view but also as a consumer point of view as an environmental point of view but also creating an awareness that our choices matter and, and, and then here comes maybe the policy making because the policy making is very important. The policy making can help in creating these tools that will help us to decide. It's like the example I gave with the mobile phone. Because today, if you go again, the same example to the supermarket, and you look like there, you see a lot of E, 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 you have no idea what is going on. You have no idea. So you need something that is really clear, transparent, science-based, you know, to translate that to you say, should I give, should I give this to someone I love or not, mm -hmm. right? So this is a good, uh, um, one, one good example. Yes, I'm, I'm Antonio Fantaleo, Marcos, for everybody. I'm Program Manager at DSC, the European Innovation Council for Energy Systems and Green Technologies. And um, I'm professor of applied thermodynamics at the University of Paris in the south of Italy and research fellow at the Imperial College London at the Department of Chemical Engineering. Well, I have to say that unfortunately, biodiesel and biofuel are facing um, a strong opposition from people that say to be to be in favor of environment, but this is not the case because uh, when I see um, exactly out of my place in the road uh, advertisement that say that uh, that um, biofuels are, are are feeding the the food scarcity, most of the input of biodiesel is now uh, used in uh, uh, the food production for um, to to produce. Uh, um, key um, input fuel for, for uh, most of uh, um, food commodities uh, that can be substituted with other pro products. But if you imagine that those uh, materials, instead of being used to produce uh, biscuits or uh, um, Nutella or uh, other uh, food uh, products, would be used for, to produce uh, biodiesel. Of course, uh, some lobbies in the food sector are not happy, but it is not a constraint in terms of uh, availability of resource. There is huge availability of resource, not huge, but enough availability to, um, to have uh, biodiesel production. Uh, and uh, to substitute fossil fuel in some uh, application, um, in uh, aviation in particular, where we don't have other options as um, uh, electrification. But we are facing huge opposition from incumbent operators that will be affected by this use of, uh, which is sustainable, of uh, um, fatty acid nitrid esters for, uh, for by this. This is just one example. And um, to the extent that the voice is stronger than the voice of uh, sustainability goals, we cannot pursue the, the, those uh, uh, biodiesel roads in favor of other options, such as uh, electric fuels, synthetic fuels that are 
by far a lot more impactful and less efficient with lower um, energy balance and with poorer externalities than the biodiesel. Biodiesel was the uh, one uh, very important option to diversify the production of energy that still could be. But I don't see uh, a role now with uh, the mention and opposition of environmentalists for biodiesel, even if uh, it is uh, a sustainable option and uh, the collection of, of uh, uh, waste, uh, um, uh, fatty uh, acids uh, and, and waste cooking oil is a, a good uh, practice that should be encouraged, uh, but uh, in, uh, in practical terms, if there are no subsidies for this and all the subsidies go to the production of hydrogen from uh, electricity or uh, capture of CO2 uh, to, to transform it into uh, biodiesel uh, with hydrogen from electricity, then it clearly is not a fair competition. Without subsidies, biodiesel would win, but with tax taxpayer money going in one direction, of course, biodiesel cannot compete. Also, if you add that in some cases, the regulatory framework simply uh, impede, hinder the, the use of biodiesel for, for specific applications. So I'm not particularly optimistic, even if biodiesel has other biomass uh, generation sources are uh, programmable, programmable uh, renewable technologies which are a perfect match with intermittent variable wind and PV generation solutions. So that would be a great match that will have huge implication also in terms of avoiding to discharge into the environment or to uh, the, the, to process in, a, in an expensive way um, these um, uh, cooking oils or uh, uh, contributing to, to soil um, uh, fertility with with the side uh, production of biochar that can be combined with uh, the production of biodiesel or uh, other advantages in the use of uh, uh, ethanol together with the fatty acid methylizer to produce uh, biodiesel and and, um, and glycerol. all these aspects are part of the broader picture that sometimes is missing to 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 regulators and to uh, to policymakers that set uh, targets, ambitious, but uh, sometimes not reflecting a merit order of uh, technologies. The innovations for green transition are not limited to industry scales. It's also flourishing among the youth at the grassroots level. A shining example of this is a project undertaken by students of Biosep and Jean Bleu Agrobiotech. This project starts with a simple yet impactful idea, converting used cooking oil into biodiesel, the students embark on a mission to collect this oil from local restaurants and households, turning waste into a resource. In their hands-on lab work, the students engage in the fascinating process of transforming used cooking oil into biodiesel. The process involves filtering the oil to remove food particles and then undergoing a chemical reaction known as transesterification. This reaction, catalyzed by an alcohol and a base, and even bio-base catalysts, breaks down the oil into methyl esters, the primary component of biodiesel, and glycerol, a valuable byproduct. This project by the students of Biosep and Jablub Agrobiotech is more than just an academic exercise. It's a testament to the power of local initiatives in driving the green transition. In the heart of Europe's green transition, every step taken, every innovation pursued is a step towards a brighter, cleaner and more sustainable world. It is our shared responsibility and our shared opportunity. Together, we can continue to drive this remarkable transformation, ensuring a healthier planet for generations to come. This is not the end of the journey, but the beginning of a new era, an era of green energy.